All right, welcome back, eighth grade. So we had just talked about um, finding the vertex given a graph. We talked about um, just vocab of quadratic functions and that a quadratic graph creates a U-shaped graph called a parabola. So now we're going to actually do a graph. And just like we did uh, for linear equations, we're going to start by using a table. Remember that when we make a table, we choose the x values and we plug those x values into the equation to find our y values. Now, because we have the one third there, I'm going to choose x values that are divisible by three. Um, and I know in my what I really need to be thinking about is what values squared are divisible by three. If you're not good with that, that's okay. You pick you can pick whatever x values you want. I've got the luxury of testing this out ahead of time. So I pick out these x values, and then I'm going to plug them in. So we've got one third of a negative 6 squared. So negative 6 squared is 36. So now I have one third of 36. And one third of 36 is 12. So when x is negative 6, y is 12. And then I just continue that. So negative or one third times a negative three squared. So one third of nine. And nine divided by three is three. I plug in zero. One third of zero squared equals zero. Because zero squared is zero times a third doesn't matter. It's still zero. And now I, I just keep going. One third of three squared. 3 squared is 9, so 1 third of 9 we already know is 3. And 1 third times negative 6 squared, not negative 6, positive 6, my bad. 1 third times 36, so 36 divided by 3 is 12. So if we look at this table, I hope that you notice that at this point our table has started to repeat itself. So the two above the zero and the two below the zero are the same. And if you remember in the last video, we talked about that axis of symmetry, that we can actually fold the U on top of itself because the parabolas are symmetric at the vertex. So what this means for us, and we'll see it when we uh, graph it, 0, 0 is going to be our vertex because that's the fold point. All right, so from here, now that I have this table, I'm going to graph those points. And you know that I don't like making you sit there and wait while I graph. So these are my six point or six, five points. Come on, Ms. Cartwright, you can count. My five points that I'm going to graph on here, I'm going to pause the recording. I suggest you pause your video, graph it and we'll see what we got on the end. All right, so I forgot to tell you before uh, I paused that we needed to at least renumber the y-axis so that our 12 would fit. So I counted by twos uh, on the y-axis. I kept the x-axis by ones, which will make this look wider than it actually, well, it's still a pretty wide one. But um, it would make it look wider just because our X's go out less than our Y's go up. But when we're looking at this, notice our zero zero is at the bottom. And I know it's not a perfect U. And they never are when we hand draw them. But we have our point at zero zero. We have a point at negative three three and three three. A point at negative six twelve and a point at six twelve. So our axis of symmetry would actually, it's going to make me go on, silly. Our axis of symmetry would go here. And the reason I make it a dashed line is because it's a feature of the graph. It's not the graph itself. So the graph itself is this solid line that we have on this one. This is just my axis of symmetry, which is the y-axis, which is the equation x equals 0 because x is 0 there, and it's a vertical line. And if you remember, vertical lines have the equation x equals, and then whatever the number. So that's my axis of symmetry. On that line, if I were to fold 
at zero zero, my left side would line up to my right side and they would match up at least to the best of our ability. Okay. So, uh, this is what, again, called the axis of symmetry and I call it AOS. All right. We've already hit five minutes. I really don't like going much longer. Uh, and we've got a couple more graphs, which take a little bit. But now that we've done this first one, should go faster. I am going to go into a new video because we are going to talk about a slightly different subject. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how to compare those graphs. And I will see you there.